It's the middle of March and I really want to get inside our greenhouse that we built last fall. It was starting to thaw a couple weeks ago, starting to see the ground a little bit, and then we just got pounded with snow. This greenhouse just got completely buried, so I'm actually going to get in here today, try to shovel it out the best I can, and get some temperature readings because we have pretty good sun right now. I just checked on my phone and it said it's 31 degrees right now, so it'll be interesting to see what the temperatures inside are showing. I put a log here to stop the doors from blowing open before the snow came when it was windy. And that might keep us from getting in. So it was a temporary fix. We're gonna put some latches on here. So the log that I put in front of the doors to keep them from blowing open from the wind is causing us some problems. It's completely frozen to the ground, so I'm heading into the pole barn right now. I'm gonna grab some tools and try to figure out some way to get it out of there. Oh, here you go. Never mind. Oh, wow, can't believe that works. All right, I got it all shoveled out and the log cleared out of there. A little bit easier than I was expecting, so. Without further ado. Yeah, it is hot in here. Gosh, it is Look at this. The ground's not even frozen. Wow. I was expect I was expecting completely frozen over. It's muddy. Alright, here's the thermometer and it's 31 degrees outside, according to the internet. 67 and a half in here, dude. That's crazy. 67 and a half. Get that cleared off. It is hot in here. We had to clean up a little bit because there was a bunch of paint stuff left over and some leftover materials from when we had an injured chicken in here. But now that it's all cleaned up, it's looking really good. It was 67 degrees and that's just unbelievable. So this time next year, we should be able to have carrots and other cold hardy crops going in here. There's literally two feet of snow on the outside and this thing without any external heat, we could have stuff growing in here. My plan is now that this is all shoveled out, I'm gonna get in here pretty much every day, every day that I can at least and get a temperature reading. Yeah, look at this ground, it's just straight yeah. mud. I was actually just talking to the guy who's gonna help me build all the raised beds in here because we're gonna do brick and I'll talk about that next, but he said, um, just monitor the ground and let them know when it's not frozen anymore so we can kind of start leveling it out and out I know we were expecting before we get in here that that was gonna take a few weeks, but It's literally already good to go <laughs> like well, yeah, it's probably gonna follow them more yeah, but still like I thought it was gonna be a lot take very long. By April, We, we could definitely go. work in here yeah. I was expecting we're gonna have to bring a heater in or something But like if we're in if we get good Sun like there's no issue being in here So now I'll tell you the plan we have these two coal frames were from an experiment we did in our cattle panel greenhouse. We were gonna try to grow into the winter, but the geese took out the plastic. So we just decided to take it out and just devote everything to compost. So I don't know what we're gonna do with these right now. We'll figure out something. So on the east side here, we're gonna do one long raised bed. The cedar boards on the outside, are, they're two feet long. So that plus the concrete foundation gets it a little bit over two. So we're gonna do one long raised bed, about two feet wide on this whole side. And we might leave a little space in this corner right here because I'm gonna do a potted blackberry bush. And those aren't hardy to our zone, but I think it can survive in here. So we're gonna do a blackberry bush here, one long raised bed along this whole side. It's gonna be about 10 feet long. Yeah, and then we'll have shelves up here, short short shelves up here for propagating blueberries on top of it, but they won't blow, it won't block the sun, they'll be up top. We'll just use some off cuts and some cedar, cedar blocking stuff we have laying around. So this whole side is going to be a raised bed and shelves, and then in the back corner, this, the raised bed is going to run all the way back here, and in the middle and the back here is where we're going to do our heating stove. And so we're gonna leave a space right here and I'll get more in depth in that when we kind of figure out the exact details what we're gonna do But we're gonna leave a space right here And then we're gonna build a 4x4 four four, something around around that size square raised bed in this corner so There's gonna be a raised bed our heat system 
and then raised bed here on this side that runs the length of this whole wall. And then the reason we have to go a raised bed in this corner, which is only gonna breach it, go out to about halfway to here, is because of this rock. Hi, Bubba. Hi. But yeah, the reason we can't do a raised bed across this whole wall, like on the other side, is because of this giant rock that's in the front corner here. We tried to get it out with a tractor. My cousin came down and he had his bucket on and tried to move it and it didn't even budge. So this thing just became part of our structure here. The plan is to have this corner be a raised bed and to just build a bunch of shelves for propagating blueberries and other fruit bushes, starting seeds. And then over the rock, we're gonna build our rainwater collection system. So we're gonna build some sort of shelf over this rock and this whole area to keep you from like tripping on it. And then do a rain barrel on that and then connect the rain barrel to the gutters we put on the outside and then feed it back into here. So that's what we're doing in here. I guess we can get started on that sooner than expected with how hot it is in here. And it's, this, is, this is just really encouraging because we kind of built this and we didn't know how it was going to turn out. I was expecting it to kind of be like our A-frame, which was like pretty good, and it would get a few extra weeks on each side, but I mean, dude, this is like, it's cooking in here. Like, I know, I, I can't, I, I'm sure I'm saying that a lot, but I just can't. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it, so far it's surpassed our expectations. Yeah, and um, so it's just really encouraging, like even without any sort of supplemental heat, this thing could easily be growing carrots right now. So I'm gonna call our friend Steve and let him know that it's probably gonna be sooner rather than later whenever he can get over here, we can get to get to getting. He said he wanted the ground thawed and leveled before we can start building these beds. Yeah, so I don't think we're too far off from being at that point. And one question I have for you all, if any of you are masons out there. We were thinking about doing one line of brick to make up each side of this raised bed, but Steve was saying he thought that it would kind of like tip out with the pressure of the soil kind of pushing out after a while. He said it wouldn't last a long time, but I mean, that just seems sturdier than all the other raised beds I've built, and those seem to be lasting, but I don't know. So if any of you guys have any opinions or experience on that, let me know, I'm curious. Also looks like we're gonna have to figure out some ventilation in here. If we do do some ventilation, the idea was this is right above where our heat system's gonna go. So we were planning on just framing out some windows. We left these doors pretty big on purpose, so they're like, this yeah. whole this whole side can be open pretty much. Yeah, we'll probably have those open all summer. So one issue we've actually been having with these twin wall panels, these U-channels on the outside keep coming off. So the snow will slide down the panels and then just eventually kind of catch on here. And when it falls, just kind of rip them off as it goes. This one has stayed pretty secure, so that's good. But the other two might be hard to see on the camera, and I have quite the climb to get you a better picture. But the other two keep popping off and it happened a little bit on the other side too and it's no big deal i just went through and kind of put them back on but i think we're gonna have to figure out a way to secure them better next time around but other than that i couldn't be happier with these twin walls they're performing a lot better so far just with the few temperature readings that we have compared to our corrugated plastic a-frame greenhouse so yeah we have a lot to do in here and it looks like we can get started earlier than we were thinking so awesome news I'm gonna try to get out here and record temperature readings in here every single day. But so far, this thing is performing extremely well. I can't believe how warm it was in there. And it's, it's barely above freezing right now and it was very comfortable to be in there. So I think we could have been growing for a while now if we had all these beds set up. So that's the next step. I'm gonna get all my materials, get my plans finalized, start leveling off the ground and start building some raised beds and get all the shelving, rainwater collection figured out, and this thing's gonna be really cool on the inside.